You guys are on the Instagram. You just let people run your mouth. And, like, this world has just come down to, like, fucking twiddle thumbs and talking shit, you know. You got a man right here. You talk shit to this man. When to lose, he's going to hit you in the head. So, you know, <laughs> men out there, just, just raise your son to be better. Tell him to get off the, the, the Instagram and the, the OnlyFans and, you know, fucking get a harder dick. Go out there and live. Like. Go out there and live like this fucking man. Have you guys seen Yosemite Sam trying to walk? The guy can't even stand up straight. That's a life <laughs> worth living. Hey, it's the weight of the world on my shoulders, bud. There we go. I mean, it definitely, uh, Don, you grew up at a different time. Like, do you aspire to be like Don Frost? Fuck no, I don't, no, man. Have you guys all? met this guy? <laughs> what marriage married you on now, Don? No. I don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to talk one. about that. Yeah, we, Fuck we no. cover that one up. <laughs> we'll cover that one up. I mean, um, who do you aspire to be when you grow up? Me? Yeah, you. Man, I don't know. Just uh, employed, I think, at yeah, this point, yeah. to be honest Just with you. Trying that. to fucking win that fight with diabetes, yeah. man. I'm proud of you. <laughs> All, right. All right. We are live here from uh, the PBR in Las Vegas. And uh, pleased to be joined now by... Uh, did, we, did we talk earlier this year, I think? I have no idea. Let's get those headsets on. <laughs> there we are. I don't know who I talked to today. Uh, you know the feeling? You know yeah. the feeling? Like, I have no idea who I talked to this morning, much less earlier. Yeah. I mean, you're a very large man. You probably have more back knee than a fucking 16 year old going through puberty I'm right not, now. I'm not that big. <laughs> I just wear really small shirts, you know? Smart That's man. That's it. I look bigger. That's what I do with condoms, really small ones. <laughs> Baby, hey. it broke. I can't get it on. Oh, I don't man. know what's going on. Look, well, I got to tell you. You still got a tie knot on it. <laughs> still got a tie knot, you know? They asked me on the way over here if I was nervous about sitting with you two guys. And I've known Don a little bit now, and we just met earlier this week. And, and I said, no, I survived a, an interview with Nina the other day. Oh, I'm not man. worried about you guys at all. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, Nina's a good girl, she's man. Great girl. She's great funny. girl. I Let love me what say, you guys, there's not many women in this sport that I respect. Nothing against women, but... You know, I love Nina. She's a good girl. She's, she's good awesome. Girl. She's, she's a, good girl. Uh, sorry to sabotage the show. Uh, hey, Lord, I'll get, I'll get back to you in a minute. Shout out, <laughs> another shout out to Miss Senko, dude. Senko knows a lot about fucking fighting. It's actually kind of funny, dude. I like, you know, you see Senko. She's like, she's pretty fine. I'm like, oh, how did you get here? Right? Because, you know, I'm a fucking guy. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an asshole. But anyways, I was watching her commentate a fight. I was right. watching her commentate a fight. Yeah. And, bro, she was giving way better advice yeah. to the corner. I almost wanted to yell at the corner, hey, just, like, shut the fuck up and listen to Laura. You know what's cool about that? Laura Sanko's amazing at her job, and, you know, bull riding is very typical, very similar to UFC, right? right. You know, it's a, it's a male-dominated sport, obviously. There's a lot of testosterone going on. But our television broadcasts You inject are, it. Some are, people are born with it. <laughs> our television broadcasts are led by a beautiful lady named Kate Harrison. She's the voice of our sport. She's the voice of PBR teams, this entire league. And I think it goes to show, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what you are. Like, she's yeah. super knowledgeable. She has a passion for the sport. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep interrupting. I'll get back to you in I'm a minute. I'm just here for the ride at this no. point. But I've got to gotta clear the air first and, and let all my friends and family at home know, like, like we're friends. You're not going to kill me right like you're no, not okay okay no, no I'm, a, I'm a nice guy we had a little banner on social media the other day and it was all in good fun and then all of a sudden i had so many people scared for my life texting me like are you okay bro sean's no. gonna kill you let me tell you guys riding bulls it's <laughs> fucking tough dude these guys on average probably get way more injuries i even looked it up i think it's more dangerous than fighting God damn right. Look at, these, <laughs> look at these fucking studs of a man dude talk about bring out the magnums right but <laughs> Anyways, there is a difference. You want to ride. There is. There is a, you want to ride a bull for eight seconds. You're gonna fall off. Maybe you get a horn. Of it, you know, you get a horn in the side. It, it sucks. But you're talking about fighting, bro. You know what fighting is. If you ever, if you ever felt, and I'm gonna be like real with you guys. When we are fighting, we are trying to kill that human being. And the only thing that stops it is a referee saying stop. When you go out there, dude, you probably have never experienced this. But there's this moment when you. When, like, you're in so much pain and you're fatigued and you're getting hit and your conscious is – every time you take a hit, dude, like, your conscious fades. You kind of forget who you are for a second. And there's this moment where, like, you, you take someone to such a dark, fucked up place where they just accept death. Yep. And until you've experienced that, you just don't know. But if anybody would like to experience that, you know, we could bring out some fucking gloves and I'll show you what it's like. I know we've got a lot of guys in the <laughs> locker room that want to try it, but but I also want to bring up there was a guy named Chase Outlaw. He's still he's incredibly talented. He reminds me a lot of you, Sean, and you, Don. Like I mean, and, and I mean that. Uh, wholeheartedly he really does because this guy does not care about anything he's as tough as they come but a couple of years ago and Cheyenne Bull hits him in the face uh has 
I, maybe somebody could tell me, 13, 32 fractures, 32 That's fractures cool. in wow. his face. He spent 13 and a half hours in emergency surgery. He had uh, 12 plates, 62 screws put in his face, and he could not wait to get back on a bull. He came to the same arena the next year won $100,000. I mean, like, so what I'm telling you is well, there's a, a lot, of, it's lot a, of similarities yeah, it's in the culture. warrior mentality. And here's the thing, you know, you guys bunch of rednecks. I respect you guys. You guys are you guys are brought up old school, yeah. you know, like these yep. fucking riders over here. They're brought up old school where you get in a conflict, you fight. They're brought up to be a man. You know, you take kids these days, especially on the West Coast where we're at, dude, they're brought up to be a bunch of women. There's children. I'm going to try to be a little PG here. But, you know, kids these days on the West Coast, they're brought up to be a woman. They're brought up to dress like women. They're brought up to act like women. So PBR is still... It's still America. It's still old school. It's still being tough. It's still being gritty. So, I mean, I, I respect you guys, man, and, and I love seeing the sport grow and continue. That's Appreciate the middleweight that, champion, man. Sean Strickland, Don Fry, Matt West, the PBR announcer. I'm TJ DeSantis. I feel like I'm riding a bull of a broadcast right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, trying to hold on to get to the end. But, yeah, I uh, mean, this guy, and then you got this fucking guy. You know? <laughs> I mean, he just, I don't know how you got this job, dude, but here we are, man. You probably a lot of knowledge in that brain. We got similar haircuts. <laughs> yeah, similar haircuts. I mean, you, you're doing better than so me. So what's your accolades, bro? How did you get here? How did you get here? Me? Yeah, how did you get here? You a YouTube guy that got here? How did you get here? So I started... <laughs> Let's uh, get to know this man, right? I started a podcast about mixed martial yeah. arts before the word podcast was existing right. in uh, 2004. So you're one of the OGs in. Yeah. I got you. I, I got so. you. Yeah, yeah I got you. Done a bunch of commentary and... You held Bruce's hand through his podcast a lot. For a long time, uh, yep, for 13 absolutely. years. Okay, this guy's one of the, the OGs. But you know, man, the PBR, you guys, I, I fucking respect it. I want to ride a bull, you know. You bring me a bull, I'll ride it. Will you, do, will you do me a favor? I will do As a friend, wait until you retire with that big, beautiful gold belt to do it because I want to see you keep getting in there and doing what you do, man. Here's the thing, man. There's only one thing in life that scares me, and that's being a coward. Yeah. And anything that I find scary or makes me feel like a little weak man, I got to do it. Yeah. So here we are. You know, I got you know, magnums over here talking about how badass bulls are and how tough it is. I want to know. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if it's going to happen tonight. I don't know when it's going to happen, but we're going to be on a bull soon. I love that, though. I, I, I love that mentality, and that's why I'm, uh, like a lot of these guys, such a UFC fan because I, I think they're the two final, like, true gladiator alpha sports left. I mean, it's American. You, 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 lock, it's you, American. Two, you lock two men in a cage and see who is the toughest on that given day, and it's the same thing in this arena. You put an 1,800-pound animal against a 150-pound guy, and, I mean, I, they're the two remaining gladiator sports, and that's why I think so many of us are such big UFC fans, oh, yeah. and hopefully – you know, vice versa. Matt, I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks we didn't get to talk much, you and I personally. But That's all right. That's all right. It's good visiting with You're you. You're coming in. We got all night, right? Absolutely. I'm going to stick around. Thanks for having us, guys. Thanks for being out here. No. Thanks for uh, – Don, you didn't say much, man. No, I had just watching the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my, I feel like this is my Uncle Don – and my cousin, Sean, and that's how I'm going to take it from now on. You know, on. PBR is America, man. PBR Appreciate bull riding is America. You know, UFC, you know, it's, a, it's American. It's, it's kind of going away from America. At, soon, at one point, you guys, there ain't going to be no Americans left in the UFC. But, hey, we always have the PBR. It's still American. Hey, we're, we're, we're together in this thing, and we're doing a lot of cool things together. So, uh, absolutely. appreciate it, TJ. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, man. There he is, Matt West, kind enough to join us here on Extra Rounds as we broadcast live from Toshiba Plaza outside of the PBR Team Championship. It is day two. Still got day three tomorrow as well, but day two tonight going on. And uh, coming up now, we've got another uh, PBR personality, uh, Keyshawn Whitehorse, kind enough to join us. What, one of the fucking magnums himself, man. Let's go. I mean, Sean Strickland called me an OG. I'm going to take that. I mean, you know, you've been, my tombstone, but you've been podcasting for a while, man. You, yeah. You're one of the OGs, you know. I, I just want to work my way up to Magnum. This stats. man, this man. No, dude. Look at, no, no. no? No. All right. I'll, I'll, <laughs> never mind. You got to be able to look down and see you before you get that status. You know, we got to get you maybe on a treadmill once or twice before we get you there. But this man. No, he man. fights bulls. I fight, I fight men. You fight diabetes. But, you know, it's all different fights, but we're all getting it done. Hey. Keep fighting. Keyshawn, how are you? Oh, man, I'm doing well. It's a beautiful day here in Vegas, and uh, I'm here with some great guys. I mean, couldn't be better than that. You know, Matt did a good job kind of breaking down what happens during, uh, you know, a, a ride. And, you know, bringing it back to UFC, there's, you know, two athletes locked in the cage. 
with one another. And, you know, on any given night, anything can happen. But I think that's magnified when you're dealing with uh, an animal like a, a pissed off bull who wants nothing more than to not only get you off its back, but maybe stomp a mud hole in you as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, you get put in that position, you're some might say it's back against the wall or anything. Uh, you got to get used to being comfortable with being uncomfortable, man. And uh, you keep your mind clear and focused on the task at hand. Your training's done everything for you. And, uh, you know, you just find that place where, I mean, honestly, for me, some guys are different. Some guys just kind of hang out and be cool, try to distract themselves, have fun. For me, uh, I stay pretty calm, keep my mind empty until when I crawl over in that buck and shoot. When I crawl in that buck and shoot, the fight is on. I'm ready to go. All my energy and focus is in that moment. What's your thoughts? When you're, when you're on that bull and the gate's about to open, what's going through your head right there? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm ready to go. That training I did before, it's going to take care of itself. It's such a reactive sport. Uh, one little second, you start thinking. I mean, I've been on a bull riding the shit out of him for six, seven seconds, and then I start thinking about, oh, what am I going to do later? How much money am I going to win or anything like that? And that's – I get slammed. What's the worst injury you've got? I think the people want to know. Uh, for me, honestly – Are you unscathed? Are you the best? Uh, I've been thankful not to get to hurt too bad. Uh, I've been knocked out a few times. Oh. got a torn LCL, got a, a disc in my back kind of messed up, but uh, nothing too serious. So for the people that know fuck about riding bulls, me included, when I ride a bull, give me a pointer. Get to the front. Okay, so you stay always, high. Stay front. Stay yeah, high. Go, yeah. When that bull goes up, you got to go up with it. The moment you get back, you're getting your ass slammed because you only got so much arm. Even you, you got, you got some pretty long arms on you, yeah. but that bull is way bigger than you. Do you want way long stronger. arms or short arms? What's my advantage? Uh, advantage is longer arms. You got more to give. A bull has a certain amount of height he can kick and stuff, but, and if you have longer arms, you might be able to give a little bit more, but honestly... If you don't stay on your bull rope, it kind of doesn't matter. When I tell when I tell somebody about a bucking horse, you know, when you're riding a bucking horse and I tell, what do you stay on? It's like it's like being with a woman. You got to get in motion. You got to get in the moment. In the moment, you're not in motion. It's awkward. You know, shit don't work out. Yeah. Is that is a bull like that? Yeah, man. Or are you just holding on for your dear life? No, I know you're absolutely right. Uh, I mean, it's a dance. It's honestly yeah. a dance. Uh, it's like. You know, the bull throwing something, you got to let that bull lead. You follow it up with right there, uh, next move, counter it each and every time. Can you do anything to make the bull a little bit more pissed off? You in his ear like, hey, you little lip dick. Hey, the, <laughs> yeah, slapping man. it before you go out. What do you do, man? Hey, man, I mean, honestly, a lot of these bulls here, they're just built just like us. They have the same mentality. Some of them, they get really jacked up. They're really bucking in there and everything. And then there's some, especially like one of the best in the world. Legendary buck and bull bushwhackers stood in there square, gave you an honest shot, didn't try to cheat you, didn't try to screw with your mind or anything. Stood there and gave it his all. And he bucked off like, I don't know, like 40, 60 guys in a row. Oh, and he stood there and gave you the honest shot. He was just better than everybody. He's going to let you know that he's going to beat you fair and square. So a lot of UFC fans, I'm assuming we watch this broadcast, and we probably don't know much about bull riding. Now, do you, what bull do you ride? Do you already pick? Do you get to pick your bull? How does that work? So with this team deal... Uh, technically, we don't get to pick. The, we get drawn a pin of bulls, five bulls, because there's five guys out each night. And with that being said, the coaches kind of uh, line you guys up with the best chance each guy has to ride each bull for the style, the way the bull bucks, to how your guy rides. I'm getting, I'm getting to know the sport, guys. I'm liking it. So what, what style is your ride? What do you do like to do? Man, I tell you what, all season long, the coaches put me on anything that nobody wanted to get on. I just did so my you're job. just the badass of the group. Yeah, I do my best shit. Uh, watch out for this man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I there to try to take care of business. No matter what, I'm up for the task. I'm ready to bring everything I got. And, uh, you know, sometimes every now and then you get the nice ones that everybody rides. So you, what bull do you want? It's your perfect world, man. You know, you're God of the sport. What, what bull do you pick? What, what's your, what's your, what's the, okay, tell you what, let me rephrase that. What bull are you scared of? What bull, what bull are you like, man, this is the one that's going to be a fight? Is there a bull out there that kind of makes you, you know, you know, a little, little, little scared. There's some bulls that I look at and, uh, you know, you're, you're not really get scared, honestly. Just know that it's going to be a little tougher than the rest. So what's a badass bull, man, for the fans tuning in the PBR? When I, when I hear this bull come out, what's the one where oh, I'm like, God damn. Shit, you're going to like the bull, this name of this bull. He's been pretty tough. I think he hasn't been ridden yet, but his name's Manhater. Manhater. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a lot of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty tough to get by, but honestly, I've been looking at a few of his trips lately, and I got on him once this year. And I know I can ride that sucker. I How long were you on him for? Did you ride him out? Or? I rode him out probably about four or five seconds. Uh, he just threw a curveball. He did something different than i never seen before on any of his trips. Uh, you know, a lot of these bulls have tendencies. They get guys off, so they keep that up. And he kind of 
deferred from it. I think it's because I was sitting right exactly where I needed well, you're to be. you were overthinking, bro. That was your problem. Man. I wasn't overthinking. I think, I think honestly, he was kind of like, oh, shit, he's going to actually stay on. I better change something up. So he switched it up on me, and I just, you know, just wasn't prepared for it at that So point. you don't need to ride this bull again? He's a rematch? Or? If we draw him again in that team series, for sure. And, I mean, honestly, within their individual season, if they were going in a short round, if I'm down there far enough, I ain't scared to pick him. I don't care. Let's fucking go, man. Yeah. So you're, you're the best here, right? You're the, you're the man of the hour? That is it. Man like White Horse. You better be, you better be a bad motherfucker with a name like White Horse, dude. I try to live up to it. Let's fucking go, dude. Awesome. Keyshawn, I appreciate you stopping by. Best of luck uh, with uh, the rest of the team challenge. Thank, Thank you. Let's appreciate fucking it. do it. There you go. Thank you, guys. Thank you, partner. Yeah, I got to get me on a bull one day. It sounds like <laughs> it's going to happen sooner rather than later, Sean. I mean, you guys, I got the good motion, you guys. I had a <laughs> lot, of, lot of practice, a lot of practice on horses. I know what I'm doing, you guys. Uh, you better wait until uh, you retire from fighting no bull. No, I'm going to handle this shit, dude. I'm going to handle it. Yeah, well, you don't want to cut yourself short. Let me tell you about this guy. I don't know this man, but he looks like the best to me. You just have that, like, swagger, like, I'm here to fucking win this, dude. Are you guys? Are you guys? Are you guys teammates? Or you guys adversaries? No, sir. We're adversaries for sure. Oh yeah. shit! Let's go. Team Missouri Thunder all the way. Now let me ask you something, because you know I'm not. A, I don't watch. I don't watch bull riding. I watch the highlights when you guys are going to the hospital. Sorry about that, but they're always great. <laughs> but uh, who who's better? Personally, I'll tell you that I'm the best. Okay. Now, yeah. well, now there's fighting. There's records. There's mm-hmm. records. If I were to look at paper, if I were to look at the fucking the pen and paper, the math, the data, who's mm-hmm. better? I would have to go check the stats. Oh. Usually, usually we go by um, percentages of the bull riding. You know, how many bulls you stayed on, how many bulls you bugged hey, off. Hey, do you know this number, dude? Do you know this number? <laughs> <laughs> All right, just well, checking. He don't know this number either. I, I believe, Andrew, you're uh, ranked number seven, correct? Yes. Uh, during the individual season, I finished seventh. Hey, let me tell you something. About, uh, I guess ranking is like numbers. What do you rank, man? Oh, I guess this is your answer. <laughs> this is the man of the hour, bro. <laughs> He, he has the money. It sounds like it matters. Number 15. <laughs> uh, one, one thing we're talking about adversaries a little bit. You have an adversary tonight in uh, Twisted Steel, which is Dana yep. White's uh, bull. T- tell me about this bull because I think only two riders have gone the full eight seconds uh, mm. with him. Yes, you know, Dana White's Twisted Steel is an amazing bull. He's an amazing athlete. You know, when I found out that Dana White got this bull, I was pretty excited because this bull is legit. He's a contender. He's here that guys want to get on, and if you stub your toe, he's going to make you pay for it. And I'm just excited for tonight, man. I got that bull, and I'm ready to show so, off for dinner. I don't, again, UFC fans, we don't know a lot about bull riding. I'm trying to know this. So what are you, what are you anticipating? Like man, this man was telling me what he's trained for. What are you training for in this one? Yeah, see, uh, a lot of bulls have different, you know, I guess you'd say techniques when it leads up to the bull riding. Yeah. For me, I do all my preparation at home, and then when I get to the event, I just go empty in the head. Does this bull have any tendencies that you got to watch for? Last time I saw him, he went out there and he went to the right and got the guy down. You know, he's a strong bull for as smaller he is. You know, I believe he weighed about 1,400 pounds. A lot of bulls come in 1,600, 1,800, but even though he's smaller, you know, it might make him a little faster. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, he ain't no Tuesday. He's definitely going to get you down. If, you know, and you're in front of him, he's going to hurt you. All right, all right, man. All right. I, I find it funny that you might actually watch tape. Like, obviously, like, when you are preparing for a fight, Sean, you're going to do tape study. But is there actually, like, tape study on, on bulls? Yeah, there's a lot of guys that do tips, tape studies, you know, with these bulls. For me personally, I don't like watching tape on bulls. The way I see it is they have their own mind, and when they leave that gate, they're going to do what they yeah, want. I'm the same way. I hate watching fights. Mm-hmm. I don't need to see it. I mean, you know, I've, I've been, been in thousands of fights on what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Sometimes I overthink shit. It's better just go in there and fight. Mm-hmm. So one more question because I asked this guy, and everybody's different. When you're on that bull, you're in the shoot, what's going on through your head? You have any, you got any thoughts, like fucking strong grip? No, man. You know, before I get on that bull, you know, I just tell myself, be that bad motherfucker you are. And once I get on that bull, I just let everything go empty in my head. Yeah. Just react. Trust your instincts. For me, it's like I need to, I tell myself that I'm ready to die for this. Exactly. Like I'm ready to fucking die for what I want. I'm, I'm going to, like, if it goes that far, I'll kill this man if I have to, if I want to. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's why I admired you were talking about the other, you know, just a while ago how when you're in a fight, you know, and your conscience leaves you and then you're between that stage of life and death, yeah. you know, you got to do something. It's a lot like that in Bora and the bucking shoots. 
Like these bulls, you'll be in the buck and shoot, man, and they'll try to buck in there and slam your ass in the buck and shoot. You have an MMA background, right? You say you train a little bit? Yes, yeah, sir. You know, like my dad, he wanted me to be a boxer. Well, he's up. Mexican, man. If you're a Mexican <laughs> guy that can't box, you know, you're a little bit on the disgrace side. So, oh, yeah. yeah. He wanted me to be a boxer. He said it paid a lot more, but, man. No, <laughs> hey, no, man. You're going to be walking and be slurring your words, sounding like Don over here. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, but, you know, the first moment I got on a bull, it was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done because i've trained in the boxing gyms and mma gyms not at your level of course but i appreciate the both mental sides of the sport there's mental warfare there's physicality you know here's the thing new where i hate where a lot of people do you know mr west over there steroid man (laughs) you know they always try to make like competition between two sports and Mm -hmm. i hate that like especially when it comes to women and men they always everything has to be a competition to why i'm better i'm not man they're they're equally great and just different Mm -hmm. so like to me Fighting and bull riding is different. Fighting's great, bull riding's different. It's not a competition, and you know, as a fan of, as a fan of most most sports, I'm a fan of the PBR. Mm-hmm. Agree. I'm a fan of the UFC, and I always say this when I get that question. I'm sure you've been asked it. Who's tougher, UFC fighters or bull riders? Well, it's you different. Got, it's, it's different. Completely different. You're going into a cage to fight another man that's been doing what you've been doing for 25 minutes. We're getting on a bull for eight seconds. Now, when it comes to injury-wise, we take one blow, we're out for six to seven months. Statistically, you guys are, you know. But now, if they would ask that who's tougher, me or a baseball player, I mean, you know, baseball's not a sport. Exactly. I mean, it's American, you guys, but, you know, we could be a little little bit honest, man. (laughs) Come on now. Oh, oh, yeah, we do sports that require two balls. (laughs) That's funny, guys. Uh, One thing I'm seeing here on the note, you broke your neck? Yes, sir, in 2020. And you didn't have any fear about getting back involved and – no, sir. As soon as I broke my neck, I knew it was a challenge that God had given me. Wow. Asking me, how bad do you want this? How How'd bad do you want to pursue it? How'd you break it? Bull uh, threw me over his shoulder, and I landed on top of my head. like Competition a or training? Competition. Competition. Oh, yeah. I broke my C7 and put me out for about seven months, but I came back hungry. And as long as I'm walking, I'm going to keep doing this. I, I think, too, that's what separates a lot of men from the boys. You know, you get people, that get, especially in the sport, you get people that, like, any amount of adversity, any amount of injury, and they just they just tap out. But I mean, you know, not to go too deep on this one, but this is what society trains you to be weak men. Society trains you like, you know, I don't want to get too off the rails on this one, but if you if you break an arm, or you're loaded up on pain pills. You're not supposed to be in pain. You're not supposed to hurt. No, man, that's fucking life. Mm. You're supposed to be in pain. When I'm in fucking pain and I wake up the next day and I can't move, dude, that's when I'm like, dude, I'm living life and I'm I'm, I'm loving it. So I think you have the same mindset. And I think a lot of bull riders do, man. That's probably why you're <coughs> number fifth. <laughs> <laughs> But no, man, I, I appreciate everything both sports have taught me. I still enjoy doing MMA just because I love the mental war side of it, you know, the mental warfare of it. I feel like it adds, you know, another weapon in my arsenal when I get on these bulls. It's different, man. It's, it's different when you know how to, like, you know, the, I would say what's different when you're fighting another man. You're, you're literally, like, it's the pinnacle of competition. I mean, again, bull riding stuff, but, you know, it's, it's, it's different sports. But when you're fighting a man, you're literally looking at a man across the ring who's been training their entire life to fucking kill you. And the only reason why he doesn't go that far is because the referee says, okay, he's unconscious, stop. But if the rules are different, it would never stop. Mm-hmm. You know, so I would, I mean, I would think that, you know, from that mindset you have, I've, training's probably kind of helped you a little bit get that savage mindset. Oh, for sure. Because I'll tell you what, the first time I met this guy, you know, I was kind of talking shit. As I, as I do, you guys, I talk, if you guys haven't noticed, First time I met this guy, I started talking a little shit to him, and he was like, hey, let me know when you're training. I'm stopping by. And I'm like, goddamn. <laughs> you don't hear that often. Most people will be like, oh, yeah, no, nah, he, was, he was up for the challenge, bro, and I'm, I'm sure going to crush this competition. I appreciate it, brother. I'm, I'm pretty tough where I come from. They breed them a little different. Where are you West from? Tex- West oh, Texas. West Texas. There we go, Texas. man. Ain't nothing but tumbleweeds and pump jacks yeah. in there. <laughs> Let's fucking go. That's all you can do is ride bulls out there. Yes, sir. You talk about coming up. I mean, uh, on the bio sheet, it says you were on a sheep, uh, mm-hmm. like mutton bus when you were like three. Yeah, when I was a kid, you know, I was about three years old. My parents put me on a sheep, and gradually as you get older, you move to steers, junior bulls, and then, you know, professional. Wow. So, so there's a little stepping ladder. What were you doing at three, Sean? Fuck, I don't know, man. Fucking at three, bro. You're not, no one's riding sheep at three, bro. What are you doing at three, man? Hey, like I said, West Texas, there ain't a bunch That's, to do out there. I was dodging beer bottles from my fucking dad. I don't know what I was doing at three, you guys. Fuck. <laughs> Here we are, right? Awesome, oh, yeah. Andrew. I appreciate you stopping by. Best yes, of luck on Twisted Steel tonight and the, the rest of the PBR team's competition. Well, I appreciate this opportunity. Talk to all y'all.
Hey, it's from a- from talking, I don't know if you guys bet on sports, but from talking to the bull riders, talking to the people, I'd put my money on this man. Thank you, brother. Let's do it. Appreciate it. Awesome. Andrew, thank you for joining us. We are Extra Rounds. It's really the Sean Strickland show here today on yeah. Toshiba Plaza. Uh, TJ DeSantis along with Don the Predator Fry and uh, Sean Strickland. We will uh, continue uh, our broadcast here. Um, you know, talking about PBR, it, it is something different. And one thing uh, you, you've said multiple times, uh, Sean, is it, it's American. And I think that is something that is sort of lost uh, in, you know, the idea of what sports are and what sports aren't. Well, you, you have a flag. Everybody generally loves America. You still have a lot of patriotism left in that sport, you know. No one's oh, coming standing out. up for the national anthem. No one's too. coming out dropping a knee on it. You know, everybody everybody still has this kind of like sense of pride in America that you have in the PBR, and it's like it's everybody apple- works hard. You know, they're hardworking people that enjoy these these two sports. And that's the thing, you know, PBR is not a rich man sport. You know, when you when you ride the PBR again, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming you grew up in West Texas, Farmville. These people that ride are the salt of the earth, and they come from hardworking people. So it's like I, anytime I see a sport that props up the flag, that props up our country, that, you know, America first, I'm with it, you know, regardless of what it is. Damn right. But, you know, I think about, like, the Cowboys uniquely American, right? And or, or Mexican, depending sure, on how, how sure. far back you want to go. Yeah, but again, you know, I mean, you have the salt of the earth people working this. These same people that go to the BBR, they're the same people in the military. They're the same people building the roads. They're not these lame dicks in the tech field, you know, trying to hook up with uh, hookers on, like, Silicon Valley. Like, the people that come here are salt of the earth. When they – buildings you see get built, they are built by them. Right. Roads you drive on, they are built by them. And we have the problem now where the world, the world is dictated not by men that build this country, not by, not by PBR fans, not by PBR writers. The people that are dictating the country are men that, you know, 100 years ago we wouldn't even look at as men. So it's nice to come here w- with the folks, with the people who built America, and, you know, it's a goddamn pleasure to be here. Yeah, uniquely American is Don the Predator Fry as well, if you've ever seen uh, Don's old fights, you know, repping old glory uh, fighting in the, the American flag colors. You're a guy, Don, that I could, you know, see raising bulls and, and, and you know, being a yeah. rancher. I had a couple bulls, but I ended up eating them, so. <laughs> <laughs> you ever, you ever ride a bull? No, no. no? He's going down the road one day, a sto- go buddy in the name Stony Newfang, and uh, there's a bull out on the road, and, and it was a uh, Belonged to a rancher whose daughter he's kind of sweet on. So he says, let's get this bull back in the fence, you know, on the other side. And I said, okay. So we're walking over to that bull, you know, and the bull looking, drops his head. And he says, now when he bull charges you, turn to the side. So when he hits you, he scoops you up and you roll over. And I go, what? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, turn side and so you roll. Like, Shit. <laughs> so as we went after him. He, we got him over on the, on the uh, on the other side of the fence. So. I got two questions from that story. One, you got the bull on the fence. I was answered. Two, the guy, did it, uh, did it accomplish his task in that bull back in, or did he strike out? You know, I don't know what happened with him <laughs> and the rancher's daughter. Don't know. <laughs> the rancher's daughter, man. What is going on here? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about uh, UFC athletes that might be good uh, bull riders. Obviously, Sean, you seem to have – curiosity about getting on the back of a bull. I mean, are you serious? Would you really do that if given the opportunity? I mean, guys, I don't want to fight a bull. I mean, if their money's right, I would do anything. You know, not, not anything, guys. Not, 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 not anything, but, you know, the <laughs> right dog. There's a place dog. for you in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> There's a place for me in Hollywood. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. But, yeah, I'd ride a bull. Present one. I'll ride it now. Yeah. They got one back there. I'll go ride it now. But, yeah, no, I'd ride a bull. How about you, man? You ride a bull? I'd eat a bull. Yeah, I can tell you probably eat a lot of bulls. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about riding a bull though. Like uh, again, you got to be mentally. You married? I am. Okay. Okay. Where how, are you going with this? How, is he is he is he a good looking guy? Oh, uh, come on, <laughs> come on. My wife and I have been married now uh, thirteen years. Oh, thirteen years, yeah. man. That's yeah. nice. Oh, yeah. Fuck. What country is she from? Uh, this one. She's okay. from Iowa, which is a country. Oh shit, down. man. Okay, yeah, just just checking. You're not that kind of guy. That's not from this country. <laughs> That's Iowa. No, dude, you seem like a stand-up guy. You know, you, you just – here's the thing, guys, in the sport. You, you get a lot of hard men, a hard men, but generally hard men don't make commentators. Generally hard men don't make podcasters. You got guys like this, the guys that 
they grease the wheels for the sport. They grease the wheels for the PBR. So I like this man. He helps our industry. I appreciate it. But that. I got to make fun of you a little bit, dude. You know, I got to make fun of you a little bit. You got kids? Yeah. You got kids? Are they hard men? Uh, no. How old are your kids? Uh, I got one. He's 12. 12? Okay. Yeah. Does yeah. he train at all, boy? No. No, he doesn't train. What do you do? What do you do if you, what do you, what do you, do if you tell your kid somebody walks up and, and slaps him? You tell him to punch him in the face? What do you do? Oh, no. Tell him to choke him. Tell him to choke yeah. him. There we go. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. It's a, yeah. It is the greatest thing. So I'm leaving my house. And there's a guy, there's a girl walking with, with her son. And the son falls down and starts crying. This kid had to be like, you know, three, four. I mean, he's a, he's a little kid. And the mom looks at him and says, hey, you're a boy. You're not allowed to cry. You got to be tough. Yeah. And I was like, I literally stopped and just started clapping. Like, yeah. I loved it. Whenever, it was so nice to hear a mother, a mother in 2023, look at a little boy and say, hey, you're a boy. Yep. You're going to grow up to be a man. You got to be fucking tough. Right. Would you do the same? I, I mean, yeah. I, they, I, I, there is something to raising a man. You yeah. raise boys to be men. I, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, how did you find fighting? Oh, man, I fucking grew up white trash, you guys. You know, you got, you got, a, you got a choice in life, you know. Go work construction, go, go to jail, or go hit someone in the face and make a little bit of money. So I chose that. But I started fighting when I was uh, 14 and then just fell in love with it. Fell in love with it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's – when did you start fighting? Yeah, I don't remember that one. You're a wrestler, right? You're a wrestler? Yeah, I wrestled, yeah. Well, so, how old are you when you took your first fight? You remember that? No. No. <laughs> no. I don't remember that. This guy's like, I don't remember what I did last night. Were you talking pro fights or are you talking just – Pro fight, pro fight. You first fight UFC, right? No, no. I fought um, – I'd already had a world championship before the UFC. Uh, they didn't – they didn't um, – didn't uh, admit it, you know, because um, they, they didn't win any competition. And, uh, hell, I, I was fighting um, probably about a year, a year before, but um, I had already done, had some pro boxing matches, oh, yeah. you know, and, and did some other silly shit. You know? what's, what's your favorite fight, top of your head, the one you're like, oh, man, I love that one? Oh, no, 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 no. Who's the toughest man you've ever fought? Uh, Yoshiira Takayama. Oh, that was a great fight. Uh, it's the best fight. Oh, I fucking love that one. Yeah, I watch that. I watch that highlight all the time. Thank you. Yeah. That whole thing's a highlight. Oh, that was fucking great, dude. Uh, what, yeah. What's crazy about Don's era, and you talk about you know having fights before you know they even really acknowledged it, is the fact that you know there were promotions back in the day outside of the UFC that. Sometimes they didn't write down the results, and they didn't get put in the fight finders. And, right. you know, the, like, like Jeremy Horn's got, like, 300 fights. He probably has 100 fights that never got written down. Right. You know, we live in a much different time, and uh, it's great to have this, you know, full circle. You a pioneer, a Hall of Famer. You the middleweight champion of the modern era. Yeah. Uh, I mean. All right, let me ask you another question because I got to know. Dude, I got to know. What did you make in the UFC? Uh, what did they pay? I got to know, bro. I think we all want to fucking know this, bro. Because I've heard numbers of, like, guys that after your time, and they tell me how much they make, bro, and it makes you want to cry a little bit. Yeah. Well, wasn't the first UFC, like, $50,000 grand prize? Yeah, 50000 like grand prize, yeah. 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 But what did you make if you lost? Uh, you were guaranteed $500 to walk through the games. Fuck hey, yeah. guys. $500. Hey, you want to be a UFC fighter? 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah, you had to love the sport. You know? But, you know, it's not that much different now, man. I always, I always like, uh, <clears throat> it's funny, uh. This, uh, this, guy, this, this guy came up to me and he said, hey, you know, my son's 17, he trains, he wants to be a fighter, do you have any advice? I said, don't do it. He goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, let me explain to you, sir. Let me explain. If you guys have kids at home who want to be a fighter, let me explain to you the, the joy of being an MMA fighter. I was like, you've seen the contenders. What do you think they make? And he goes, I don't know. I go, they make five and five. If they lose, they make five. And he goes, Damn. I go, if you lose, guess what? You're not going to the UFC. So this entire life you could have spent building a life, doing any other aspect in life, you chose to train fighting. So let's just say you make it. Now you make it to the UFC. Well, hey, guess what? What do, they, what do you think they sign a, a, the average guy on? You know this one, man, TJ. You're a, you're a UFC guy. What, what does the average guy get signed on? Uh, 12 and 12? 10 and 10. 10 and 10. 10 and 10 from this man. So, you know, you make it to the UFC. You get signed 10 and 10. And now you fight for 10 and 10, and you, you spent your entire life working to this one goal. You, could, you get the blue check mark. You get the U of C in your logo. You get all the, the people. <laughs> you get all of it now. So you go two and two. Maybe they're boring fights, and the U of C cuts you. And now guess what, you guys? You have made a total of, uh, let's see, 20, 40. You've made a total of $60,000 your entire career. 
and you have no other options because you can't be a part-time fighter. You've got to be full-time. Right. So now you're a 24-year-old man looking yourself in the mirror saying, I spent my entire life doing this one thing, and I've made $24,000 or $60,000. What do I do now? You go teach cardio kickboxing. And, and, that's, and that's like the damn shame of like most industry. It's like you get kind of Weinstein. You know, you get like – you, you, they put this big old fucking UFC logo. And, again, I love the UFC, guys. I make more money in the UFC than fucking – I mean, I'm, I am not a poor man, you guys. I would, be, I would be in the rich category, which I still am fucking shocks me every time I think about it. But they put this big old fucking logo, and you sell your fucking soul for it. You sell your fucking soul for it, man. 